So you'd like to learn how to forecast. Let's take a look. All right, so these are the numbers you'd like to see. You, don't, of course, don't want to stock out. But look at this, 12, 88, 2. Those are really good numbers. These numbers down here, 600, 177, 600, 300, 300, 200, 200, 200. That's not very good. This happens to be my team, Andrews. So part of it, you're going to have to look at the age, look at the MTBFs, look at performance and size, and look at your price compared to everybody else. And then you're going to have to look to see where you fit in into the picture uh, of your numbers as far as the price, age, reliability, etc. This is the biggest thing you can learn from right here for your forecasting. The computer itself will tell you what it thinks your potential market share is the next round. It tells me that I'm going to lose market share. So here in the low tech market, I only have I only have one low tech product. I only have one low tech product, and that is Able. Now I sold 1,716 units last time. That almost doesn't matter. Based on the information that it has on me, 8.1, 11.8, a three years old almost, it thinks that I'm going to sell a, a smaller percentage. So this is what we do. Considering that I'm going to move things around, I would move things around if I was playing one more, one more round here. Uh, let's put this right here where you can see it. Okay, so it says the total industry demand is 10,804. Then it says that next year's growth is going to be 10%. So we multiply this by 1.10, that's 110%. And that tells me there are 11,884 products or units that are going to be created. It also shows me here that I'm going to have a market share of about 14.6%. Let's, let's scroll all the way down here to the bottom, near the bottom, right here, this page. So this is page, whatever page it is, page 7. Page 7 in your Fast Track report, they may change the name of the report, but essentially it's all the same. It's just a different name. Okay, here I have ABLE, was it 15.9% this time of the market share? But it's saying I'm only going to get 14.3% next time. Well, now that I know that 11,884 products will be created, I'm going to multiply that number by 0.143. And that tells me that next round, if I were to produce 1,700 parts, I would probably sell out. So what I need to do at this point, considering that I have to change my age sometime in the year to be competitive, I need to change the performance sometime in the year, you know, to, to change the age, um, that 1700 is, is most likely correct. So I'm going to stick with 1700. I maybe add 10 more or five more, just so I have something left over. I'd rather have something left over than stock out, but that, is how you forecast. Now let's consider the low tech market or the high tech market. It's the same thing. And we can do it all from this page, uh, I believe. Let's see here. It says that the units demanded in the high tech market is 9,288. Let's put that in here 9,288. There's going to be a 20% increase. So let's multiply that by 1.2. That's 20% more. That says there are going to be 11,145 units created next round. Well, if I'm taking over, let's say Amoeba, 11.7% uh, market share compared to 113 this last time, that means I'm going to produce a little bit more. So I'm going to multiply that by 11.7. That tells me that I'm going to sell 1,304 units next round. And that's going to be very precise. And that's why the last couple rounds... The last couple of rounds that I've, I've played are products, not that one, let's go down here. Our products have sold out or come very close to it. See, the ACK sold out last time, and it suggested that I sell more last time, and I just, I just didn't want to push it. But even then, if you look here, Abe Lincoln had two parts left over. That is almost perfect. Annoy, 88. Amoeba, 12. Now, it said... Amoeba for the next round would sell 1,304. So what would I need to do? I need to sell 300 more than what I did last. I need to produce more, which also means my capacity would need to be increased. Now I didn't increase capacity this time because 
this was the last round. But if I had another round to go, I would have increased capacity next time, knowing full well I'm going to have a 20% increase. If you have a low-tech product and you're already producing more units than you have capacity for, then you need to increase that 10% each round. So if I were to do this for another round, I would say, okay, I know I'm going to produce 1,700. I would want to try to get close to 1,700. But if I was just going to increase it 10%, I'd increase it up to 1,430. That's it. Just another 10% for 20% for the high tech. So capacity next round for this one, I'd increase it 140. This one, 130. For Abe Lincoln, another 140. And for Ach, another 120. So each round, if, they, if the demand is increasing 20%, then my capacity should be increasing 20%. And then my units sold will increase based on this number right here. Right here. They tell you exactly. This is easy. It tells you exactly, almost exactly, what you're going to sell. Now, something that could put a, put a, a wrench in the works. Let me show you. If you come up here to the top, not there, right here. If you look here and you see somebody has another name that pops up, but it doesn't, it just tells you the revision date. It doesn't tell you any of this other information. It just tells you when it's coming out. That means it's a brand new product. Most likely that's going to be a high tech product if it's a brand new product. So what you need to do if it's going to be a high tech product is you need to go and count how many of these there are. So we would say, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten high-tech products. Well, if there's another one coming out, it's probably going to be high-tech. So that means there'd be 11. So then I would say, wow, okay, if there are going to be, say, 11,000 products created next time in the high-tech market, and there's going to be 11 products in there instead of 10, that means on average, I'm going to have 1,000 units to sell by each one of my high-tech all right. Now, if I have higher accessibility or um, higher promotion, then I might be able to bump this up on mine where you see where I'm over a thousand. I might be able to bump it up and say, OK, instead of 1300 parts this next round, because there's another high tech unit coming in, it's going to steal at least a couple hundred. That's when you also pay attention to their capacity. If their new high tech product comes in with a capacity of only 460, well, they're not going to be able to create. 920 next round because it's going to come sometime during the year, which means they can't sell a thousand, which also means I get a portion of that. So that is how you forecast. That's how you take advantage of looking at the numbers and saying, if I'm taking one eleventh of the market for each one of my high tech products, then I should be able to produce at least that 1000 next round. And if their capacity is not high enough to do that 1,000 for them and their accessibility and their awareness is lower than mine, then they might actually do only half of that, which means now I get 500 to 550 that I get to split between my other people or between all the other people. So that's another 55 parts for all the other contenders. All right. And you should be able to see how people are positioning their parts. And you can see what if they're going to let it age. Uh, and become a low-tech product, or if they're keeping them new so they can maintain their high-tech product status. Another thing you pay attention to. But while you have those in, you just divide it up by how many are in the playing field, and that tells you about where you're going to go. Use the computer, the, the, the fast track report. Use that report to tell you what your potential market share is next round, because it's going to be pretty dead on. Since I started using that the last three rounds, I have cut down on how many times I've sold out or by how many times I've overproduced because the overproduction, that's what gets you the emergency loans. And that is what puts you behind in the game. We were the winners of this game. So take it for what it's worth. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Enjoy.